This video will show you how to test the hypotheses that the slope and intercept are different from zero in a simple linear regression. Now the example data set we're going to use here is the chicken lysine data. You might remember this data set has 12 observations, a certain number of chickens ingested lysine to help them be healthy and to grow. Uh, and so we have the observations here. So the, the dependent variable is the amount that chickens gained weight and the independent variable is the amount of lysine they ingested. And back from the notes in the class, when we did this, we found that if chickens ingest more lysine, they tend to weigh more. And so that's the relationship here. What we wanna do is a test for the slope and intercept of this regression line. Uh, now, like we said, there's a relationship there between lysine and the amount that a chicken gains weight. But we wanna know if beta zero and beta one are any good. Uh, that is, are they different from zero? And so we've got a hypothesis test for that. So what we're gonna start with is to test whether or not the slope is equal to zero. And what we're doing here is we're setting our null hypothesis equal that beta one equals zero and our alternative hypothesis that it does not equal zero. As it turns out, we don't care if it's negative or positive. If you remember though, we know that the value beta one is uh, a positive value because we've already found what the value of beta one is in our calculations. And so here's our test statistic to calculate uh, the t statistic for the beta one hat variable. Remember, we have a hat on top of beta one because we've estimated it with our data. And the numerator is beta one hat, and we divide that by the square root of the residual mean square, and then multiply it by one over s sub xx. Now remember that s sub xx isn't really a value that's meaningful in terms of our results, but it helps us in our calculations to determine a lot of things related to simple linear regression. And so we're gonna calculate this by plugging in the numbers that we have in our formula. So here we can say that T sub beta one hat is gonna equal, you'll remember we found 35.8280 as beta one hat. We'll divide that by the square root of 1.0692. And then we multiply that by one over 0 0.0221. Remember that our 0 0.0221 was our S sub XX and 1.0692 was the mean square for the residuals from our regression equation. And so if you do the calculations out, uh, you should get, um, let's see, 35.8280 divided by uh, the square root of 48.3801. And then the final calculation is, or the final number is 5.1510. And so that's the value for, uh, T sub beta one hat is 5.1510. So now we can look up on the T table uh, and we can find out on the T table what value we're comparing against. And if you look at the T table with 11 degrees of freedom, or I'm sorry, 10 degrees of freedom, um, we find a value on the T table of 2.228. So we can say, uh, as our conclusion of our hypothesis test, since 5.1510 is greater than 2.228, we reject the null hypothesis. So we have evidence to favor the alternative hypothesis. And so we can say that the slope that we found for the relationship between the amount of lysine that a chicken ingests and the amount that it gains in weight is positive and it's significantly different from zero. And so we should have known that. Uh, remember, we looked at the lines um, and compared um, and knew that there was a positive correlation between uh, chicken lysine uh, and that relationship. So we can do that for the slope, but we can also do it for the intercept. Um, and so here are the calculations for the intercept, very similar instead of testing beta one, we're testing beta zero. And so our null hypothesis is that 
beta zero equals zero. And our alternative is that beta zero does not equal zero. And so the test statistic here is quite similar. We use the same values, except we'll use beta zero hat in the numerator. We'll use the residual mean square in the denominator. We need to know n, the number of samples. We need to know x bar. And we need to know again, s sub xx. And so once we have these values, we can begin to conduct a hypothesis test for the intercept in this relationship. And so let's plug the values in for our data. You'll remember we found the intercept to be 12.5085. We can divide that by uh, all of this in square root. 1.0692 times one over 12, we have 12 samples, plus our mean x bar uh, that would be the mean of the lysine ingested was 0 0.1658. And remember, we'll square that. And then we divide that by S sub XX or 0 0.0221. And so when we do that, we'll get 12.5085 divided by all of this under the square root sign. Again, the residual mean square 1.0692. Multiply that by 1.3272. So that should be everything uh, here in the parentheses works out to be 1.3272. And then we conclude, can uh, calculate a final calculation or a final number. And so we should get uh, 10.5004. And again, that's our value of T sub beta zero hat or our test statistic. And again, we're comparing to that same value from the T table we found. That was uh, 2.228. So we can say, just like with the slope, since 10.5004 is greater than 2.228. We reject the null hypothesis. So in other words, we have evidence to say that the value beta zero is not equal to zero. Uh, so we reject the null hypothesis in that case. So there you have it. That's how we might test to see whether or not beta zero and beta one are any good. And so this is a common way that we can do it. In R, we'll get output that directly correlates to this and should be the same output. And we'll see this um, when we do the calculation in R as well.